Hello, I'm Renee Esquivel, and you're tuned into my YouTube channel, Technologist on the Go. Um, now, for the last two years, I've been using uh, MiFi Hotspot from T-Mobile. It's the Link Zone 2, uh, made by Alcatel. And the video I have on that, which I'll link to in this video, is probably my most popular video on my channel. But I have noticed that over the past year, really maybe even year and a half, the performance of that Link Zone 2 has been degrading. I attribute that more to the proliferation of 5G. And so it's just all the attention goes to 5G, not so much for the uh, older four, you know, LTE. And so I, whereas I used to enjoy anywhere between 20 to 40 megabit per second download and, and 6 to 12 megabit per second upload, I'm getting half that consistently with the Link Zone 2. Um, and so while it still is 2023 and I, I was using it repeatedly in January, it was often with um, uh, results that would, I would say were fair, just, just above being poor. And so I've decided to upgrade to the um, Insego M2000B as in Bravo LTE modem. Now this particular one, um, T-Mobile stopped selling it directly about February or March of last year. Um, but I was able to get it for $80 and it was unused, absolutely unused. In fact, when he it still had the, that little tab on it on the battery and I pulled it uh, so I was the first one to actually take a crack on it and so for $80 to get into a, a 5G hotspot that's a that's a good price not a great price but a good one so let's get right into it and uh, and do a comparison between the two no real comparison per se but um, as one is an older technology but I still want to compare them and uh, and then let you be the judge now this is the modem to which I'll be comparing it. It's the Insego M2000, and this is a legitimate 5G uh, mobile hotspot. It's one that T-Mobile was selling back in 2020. The question is, is it still good in 2023? Well, the answer is, uh, compared to the Alcatel, which I'm still using in 2023, the answer is, heck yeah. Why not? One is 5G and this is uh, LTE. So even though T-Mobile doesn't sell this one anymore, doesn't mean it's not still viable. It's very viable. But let's go ahead now and uh, do a comparison and show um, how well one does uh, compared to the other. And they'll be using the same SIM card in each case. So we'll start with the... Uh, my existing one, the the Alcatel Link Zone 2. One thing I do want to point out is the size of the rechargeable battery. The uh, Link Zone the Alcatel Link Zone 2, uh, its battery is is much smaller, and uh, as you can see here for the uh, uh, the charge there, it's. Uh, let me zoom in. It's a uh, 4,400 milliamp uh, typical capacity. Whereas on the Insego, it is a 50-50. It is a higher typical amperage. So it, this one, it's larger size and it will be uh, about maybe 20% better on battery usage. Now, here, about 10 seconds into the uh, Alcatel Link Zone 2 from the time I powered it up, and uh, it's still powering up. I just want to get an idea of how long it takes to uh, power this one up. It should be up momentarily once it starts doing what you see there with the uh, LTE bars. And there we are. We're up and running now. And that's uh, about 40 seconds is what it was. 
Now I started timing on my Apple Watch the MiFi from the time I pressed and held the power button until the MiFi splash screen first appeared. I just want to get an idea of how long this takes to power up. I know that the Alcatel Link Zone 2 doesn't take very long to power up. I'm thinking 30 to 40 seconds. It's about a minute and a half, a little bit more than a minute and a half for this one to come back up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and test again. I'm about 40 feet away from the MiFi going through three drywalls, actually. Again, download is, is even better from that position. It's the upload that lets me know how workable this area will be for me if I had to rely on it. And there we go. That one, I did find a good location. Okay, so that location will work. And uh, later when I, I can get my hands on the uh, Link Zone 2, I can do the comparison between the two and see how well one works, but I can work with this. Um, uh, as I said, it's the upload when I'm doing, uh, providing remote access, this is critical. And I found that I really need at least five megabit per second to work. Uh, I can sometimes get by with three, but five is better. And at this point I'm close to that. So I believe I would be functional. Uh, functional in my lab if I had to rely on this as internet, which sometimes happens uh, when there's internet outage. Okay, as you can see here, I am connected to the T-Mobile hotspot. Both Link Zone 2 and the M2000, I'm using the same hotspot name. Okay, so I have that one up. You can see it's got a good the signal that it's picking up, even though I'm going through three drywalls to do this over about 40 feet. Okay, now let's do the speed test. Download speed noticeably slower, but upload speed... Wow. Well, there you go. Uh, there is a definite uh, advantage with the M2000 on the 5G network versus the Link Zone 2 uh, cap that LTE. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, Link Zone 2 or Insego M2000. Um, no real comparison and for me it's time to go to the 5g and it's time to retire the link zone too um i hope you enjoyed the video uh please uh give me a like and subscribe and i will also counter subscribe and i'll look at your content so it's not just you helping me but me helping you as well and uh, any questions you have post them i will try to get back in a timely manner and uh and hopefully give you answers that will help you make a good decision for yourself. And until that time, as the next video, bye-bye.